Hey, hello everybody, this is Purge, and I'm bringing you guys a gameplay commentary, except we're going to be doing it a little bit differently today. Um, I played this game last night, uh, very, very late, after getting stomped a couple times throughout the day, so I was not in the mood to record, so I played this Kleeks game, and I, after the fact, regretted that I did record it a little bit. So I'm going to be casting this from with a replay, so it's not going to be exactly the same as my normal um, cast, because uh, obviously I do know what happens, but... Um, I figured I ended up randoming Clinks this game, and I was like, eh, I've made a Clinks game, maybe I should record this, and I just didn't bother, and I was like, oh well, uh, not a big deal. So it's probably better this way anyways, because I've been uh, focusing a little bit too much lately while I play, and haven't been able to give as much commentary, so I can go over a couple things here. As, uh, as this progresses, and I'm going to speed this up just a little bit so we can get into the actual gameplay stuff. So I'll do free camera for a little bit, and then I'll change it to player perspective, so... You can uh, end up watching me pretty much the same way that you have in the past. Alright, so, Tex fucking Murphy playing the Juggernaut. We have Super Mo playing Tide Hunter, Soviet Communism on Puck. It's all about the journey on the Lycan. And finally, Sick Man is on the Pudge. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed this yet, but it should be a lot quieter than it normally is, and this is because I'm not running uh, XSplit, which I normally do when I stream. So, a lot, of, almost all of my recording the last couple of weeks has been with XSplit on, and that makes my processor run hot, and it's very loud, and I, I really apologize. Like, it believe me, it annoys the crap out of me ever-living crap out of me, but it's just something that we have to deal with until next Thursday when I get my new PC, and that's going to be quiet and fast as hell, and we will not have to worry about things anymore, so I, 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 I apologize about that, seriously, guys, I'm sorry, but nothing I can do about it for now, my computer's just getting a little old, so, or at least, it uh, needs a new processor fan, I'm just not going to spend the money on the fan when I can get a new computer, so, anyways, for the Dire Team, we have Jetsu playing the Eventual Spirit. Uh, B5M Tintin is on the Shadow Demon, uh, Twisco is going to be playing a Death Prophet, and finally I'm going to be playing the Clinks. and the last hero we are missing is Chachi, I believe, and I can't remember what he picked. Oh yeah, it's going to be an X, that's what it is. It will be an X, so let's go over to the old player perspective, you guys can watch this replay live in game if you want to. If you want to do that, guys, seriously, hop into, uh, let's try to find, I don't want to watch Pudge, why are my numbers not working, don't, oh, don't tell me that I'm going to get dicked over. What if I choose Clinks in the new player perspective? Ooh, this is... I'm not happy about this one. I thought for sure I would be able to watch player perspective, but I'm not able to switch unless there's some hotkeys that I'm not used to, but this is Pudge's player's perspective. Um, I couldn't even check anybody else's but mine there. I am not happy. <laughs> I thought for sure that I was going to be able to watch my player perspective. Um, it's okay. Well, I guess I'll just focus on myself, um, down, it's, it's too bad, but, what if I go directed first, and then I go player perspective and press 7, nothing, I, I literally, there's apparently some observer bugs going on right now, so that's, that's pretty sad, I'm sad about that, anyway, so, first of all, I am playing a Clinks. there is a, I buy a Wraith Band first, with a ring of protection, the reason I picked this up is because I wanted to go for a really fast ring of Aqua. Um, that means that I only have to buy the Sage's Mask, and then it will be complete, and that gives you plus 15 damage, which is quite high. And if you look at my stats right now, I've got 46 here, plus 3. If it wasn't for this Wraith Band, I would be hitting for 40, so it's very important to get a little bit of stats early on. Um, I also have enough regen to make things fine. I'm going to take out the range creep first, because I can, and I'm going to miss last hits like crazy, because that is typical. I love what the Vengeful Spirit is doing here. I don't know who this guy is, but he played a very, very good Vengeful Spirit. What he's basically doing is forcing Puck out of EXP range. If Puck comes up, Vengeful Spirit comes from the jungle and harasses. And this is something that a lot of support players don't do correctly. They sit in the lane, and they just stand there. And then Puck always knows where Venge is. And look, Venge coming out once again. Gonna trade hits with the Puck. She has less regen, but she doesn't really care a whole lot. And that's fine. Might even throw a stun. There's a stun. I'm gonna get two extra hits off. Three extra hits. Yeah. No, there's no reason for Venge not to trade with this, and Puck's gonna back up, pop a salve, probably. Uh, yeah, he's gonna pop a salve, but all of a sudden he's down to one tango, so... And I've had complete free farm this whole time. Now, Ring of Aquila is picked up. Make sure you turn that off so the stats do not, or the armor does not apply to your allied creeps. You can check that by, that should say inactive right there, right next to Ring of Aquila title. And additionally, you can also click on your creeps and look for the plus armor. And we're gonna find the Puck in the jungle. I knew he was probably gonna warp out, but he ended up not doing that, so... That means we can lead him off a little bit, and now I'm going to do a little bit of orb walking with searing arrows, and what orb walking means is I attack and move and attack and move. I go invisible to get the pursuit up, get, trying to get vision on him, and there we go. So that's going to be the first blood picked up, or second blood. But that's the first kill of the game for me, so that's pretty cool. I assume, yeah, man, there's still so many observer things that are have been bugged out. Um, I wish they would fix. Used to be able to change 
at least vision to what I could see, but unfortunately we can't do that. And let's just try this one more time uh, in a second. Um, anyways, what I'm doing here quick, searing arrows to get last hits, searing arrows to harass, and especially on Puck where he has low armor like this. See, look, it's like almost changing, but it won't let me do it. So, sad day. Alright, so... Boots are picked up now, probably going to go for a Treads route immediately after this, and that's pretty smart generally because it allows you to get decent attack speed. Clink's start animation is pretty terrible, and it's actually one of the worst in the game in my opinion. But on the bright side, when you have Searing Arrows, you gain plus 30 damage, so this allows you to get a lot of easy, easy last hits pretty much. And once again, just throw in every attack I can on the Puck because that's going to lower his HP down by a significant margin. Most of his regen is already burned, so at this point I'm, I'm willing to go aggressive like that. Just throw little attacks in occasionally. Continue to get good last hits. And if we check my last hits so far, I am up to 15. So I have the most in the game by far, despite missing a couple, and I have a kill. All very good stuff. Looks like Vengeful Spirit oops, did some pulling. That was a stack pull. Very, very good on uh, Jetsu so far. And I pulled the Creep Wave pack back, no problem at all. Really wish this was player perspective. But it's not, so, oh well. 500 gold. Looks like Twisco is on the mid lane now, he's playing to- oh god. I told him what his skill build should be, but he still fucked it up. <laughs> uh. Oh well. Ball lane is this Shadow Demon with Chachi. Looks like Chachi's playing a- that axe, so. Anyways, continuing to get last hits. I know it's less fun to watch in a free camera rather than just to watch player perspective, but I don't I don't quite know how to fix that, unfortunately. I wish I did. I'm gonna try it one last time. Alright, I'm not gonna try it anymore, I swear to god, but that's so painful. So painful, I thought for, for sure I could just cast the player perspective, but I guess that is not working, so. Anyways, back to the last hitting, gonna miss last hits like crazy. I seem to remember I missed a bunch right here. Yeah, okay, good, I got that one at least. Another nice thing about the Ring of Aqua and why you get it is just because of the... Uh, not only the armor, which I get plus 3 armor, or the damage, but also for the mana regen. So it does give you 0.65 mana regen per second, it's a static rate. This is the same on any hero that you play. So it's very nice to have that up on clinks because I will be casting Seer and Arrows. Like every time I cast a Seer and Arrow, it's 8 mana. So I need to be able to cast that very, very often. Now I do pick up my ulti now. The way that Clinks' ulti works is you end up killing a uh, enemy or neutral creep, or allied creep. And it gives you bonus damage and HP based on which creep you consume, based on how much HP the creep Radiant's you consume has. So what you generally want to do with this ability is run into the jungle, find a creep, and cast it on them, because they have the most HP for a neutral creep. And that will boost up your damage, it'll boost up your HP as well. So I think I finally go in the creep here. I was trying to sight him through the trees, but it didn't end up working. So I walk around here, popping that up, and we went from 644 to 1119. Our damage also increased by about 50, so... You get a 50% health gain based on how much HP there is, and 5% damage gain. And now I can just auto-attack down these Wildkins pretty easily. I wanted to clear out that camp because I knew I'd be doing that again later. Unfortunately, Venge did a despawn here, but that's okay. So I, I cleared out the camp because I wanted a new big creep to spawn later. And all of a sudden I'm hitting for plus 100, and I have my treads up. So every time that I harass the Puck, much more likely to do good damage. So there's the phase, gonna continue pressure beam. Looks like I did 100 damage there, and death pack just ran out, so back down to low HP. So generally it's kinda nice to just be aggressive with this heal, or with the ulti that you have. It does allow you more or less, I might be able to get this kill here, with a little bit of orbing. See, I don't, that kept happening this game, that was really weird. He would cast his illusory orb, and immediately afterwards, like as he casted it, it would dodge one attack. And that's not at all how it's supposed to work. So I don't know what's going on. I don't think he pressed phase shift. I'll keep an eye on him. I know it happens multiple times this game, and it's quite annoying. But throw in one more attack, and we'll see if I can get the kill. No, he's going to orb bomb past once again. But he doesn't have a whole lot of armor. I was going to use my death pact on a regular creep. They only have about 550 HP, but really, you're, you're not losing a whole lot compared to, like, a wildkin. Wildkin, of course, at 800. 800 so. And it looks like I'm going to go be aggressive towards the puck again. Um, oh, that's right, Tony was ganking, I forgot about that. And he orbs on through, and I was like, okay, he's in the jungle, and then he gave vision because he was attacking. He was not spamming stop, so I get a free kill there. Um, uh, god, is he missing a skill? Yeah, he hasn't leveled up something else. He grabs stats. Oh god, did he really grab stats? No, he didn't. Good. 
Anyways, using the ulti here. Clinks is actually a pretty good tower killer. I wasn't actually using my Syrian arrows here, but I should have been. I'm gonna try to last hit this tower here. I don't remember if I get it or not, but... And it looks like Twisco actually snaked that one. I attacked a little slow. So you can use Syrian arrows on towers. That's important, guys. 50 extra damage to towers is very significant. The way that this first skill works it gives you a bunch of bonus attack speed. Up to 110% has a duration. That's what scales most of the levels. And I just went invisible there because I didn't want to screw around with Pudge. If they had like dust or something and got a hook off, I could die pretty easily. So um, I think I'd go in the jungle and use my ulti. Now this does heal you. So I'm going to find Dark Troll Warlord. 1100 HP. It's a crap load of HP. There's very, very few creeps that have this much. I think Dark Troll Warlord is the highest one. So that'll give me the most damage and uh, as well as HP. And it does heal you, so if, as you see, the, the green bar is now shifted higher up. It's not just like a percentage-based heal. The HP that you grab from neutral gets added to your total. So that means when the HP goes away, I'll only be missing like 10% or something. Now I'm getting positioned here. That silence was a little bit early from Tony, but I did not pop straight because I was completely out of mana here. And he's going to orb through and uh, look at first sight, but I do get the last one. So I'm probably not going to try to exaggerate the kills here because I do know everything that happens. I seem to remember. I just played this game last night, so... But what Twisco messed up, Klinx is really a stealth hero. His, oh, his third skill makes him go invisible. I, know I haven't talked about that yet, but you want to get in position. If, for example, Puck is standing right here, I want to initiate here, because I know his safe point is here. You have to stand between them and the safe point. So I was still getting in position as Twisco silenced him, and that almost let Puck get away. It was very, very close. If he would have phase shifted, maybe, um, he would have been much more likely. Maybe he, was already, maybe he already used phase shift, I'm not quite sure, but... Anyways, I can now continue pushing top. I've got quite a bit of gold, and with the treads as well as the aqua, my survivability is decent. I've got mana for skeleton walk. If I do get ganked, I can always go invisible and run away. That's the general benefit. And skeleton walk has the um, the nice thing about it is that it gives you really good movement speed. And it's not something that I skilled up early in this case because I was just like, whatever, I'm going to be invisible. But sometimes against good lineups are good players when they buy lots of dust and sentries and things. Skeleton walk is very useful because even if they can see you, you run obscenely fast. So this point up to 700 gold now. Anyways, item progression at this point. There's a couple different ways that you can go with the clinks. Uh, generally, the Orchid is the best option. Almost always an Orchid is going to be a best, the best option, and the reason that Orchid is the best option is because um, it allows you to get a lot of bonus damage. If I could find the item, here it is. Alright, so 25 intelligence, 30 attack speed, 30 damage. So that's pretty good. 30 attack speed, 30 damage. It also gives you 150% mana regen. So with all the mana regen, as you can see, I do actually need more mana regen. I have been casting Death Pact every chance I get. So it would actually be nice to have more mana regen. It also allows you to spam your Searing Arrows more, and generally be, just be really, really efficient. Like, you can end up, you never have to go back to Fountain because you can heal with your Death Pact, and the Orchid will give you more than enough mana regen. So, the main reason why you also get the Orchid is because Clinks has very, very, very little contribution to any team fight or gank or anything without items. If he doesn't have items, he doesn't do anything at all. So I can do Searing Arrows, I can attack fast, and I can get damage and HP from Death Pact. That doesn't do anything, right? If that's not a stun, that's not a slow. I'm just contributing damage. So what you want to do, preferably, is grab the Orchid, because that'll allow you to silence somebody for 5 seconds. I can go gank here like Puck and say, silence, attack, 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 kill. You know, because most, most intelligence-based heroes have low HP. They completely rely on their abilities generally to stay alive. In this ga game... Orchid is not the best choice. If I was playing against a bunch of casters, I would get Orchid for sure. But if you look at their lineup, they have a Pudge, they have a Puck, they have a Lycan, a Tide, and a Juggernaut. The only hero that uh, Orchid would really be good against is against the Puck. So what you can do sometimes, looks like we found a Pudge here, I think that was based on wards. And he did end up getting really lucky with the suicide there. Yeah, we did have wards up because this guy's been doing awesome and jumped in on them and just turned on the strafe and auto-attack, did tons of damage, and he got really, really lucky with this uh, suicide. So so this game, not going for the Orchid, I picked up an ultimate orb. There's another item build that you could do before Orchid got added to the game that people sometimes did on Klinx's, and it's a fast sheep stick. And you guys might be seeing, why the hell would you get a fast sheep stick? It's because it's kind of similar to an Orchid, but the disable is good on anybody that you use it on. Anybody. It's three and a half second disable on anybody, and all of a sudden I can gank any of these guys, except for maybe like Lycan because, ooh, he gets hooked there. I forgot about that. Um, except for Lycan because Lycan in his ulti form is max movement speed anyway, so he actually went for a hand of minus this game, which is a little weird, but... Anyway, so with the sheep I can then gank anybody, and I still get that same mana regen. I still get damage, I still get a little bit of attack, not nearly as much damage as I would from an Orchid. I mean, an Orchid gives you 30 damage, 30 attack speed. 
Sheep's that gives you 10 agility, and what is that? That's 10 damage, 10 attack speed. So it's really not that much worse than an orchid in that sense. It really is not. So it's more expensive by quite a bit, but sheep has better implications in a game. So, And this is the part where I go for the old tower. I'm just going to continue soloing the top lane because that's what you do as a clink. So you just solo for a long time. You go invisible. I go invisible here, and I did actually run into that hook, which is pretty funny. I was worried about dying, but neither of them actually had dust. So if you're playing against people who decide not to get dust, then whatever, man. And as you can see there, so my 600 HP shifted up, my max HP reduced, that means every time that you do get a kill, you're set. And I picked up a Void Stone there once I got that tower kill because uh, my mana, as you can see, has been quite low for a while, and the Mystic Staff wouldn't provide nearly as much. Generally, you only grab the Mystic Staff first in a sh side of the vice if you're playing an interior or like a low HP strength hero. And the reason is because the mana regen that a Mystic Staff gives you is generally... Depending on how much your int is, of course, but the mana regen from a Mystic Staff is usually not very much, and Clinks doesn't really need a huge mana pool, so I'm just doing a little bit of harass there. In for pretty hard, about 115, with uh, the bonus damage from the Centaur here. But yeah, with the Void Stone up, I'm now up to 4 mana per second. I'm going to continue getting last hits, trying to farm up that Sheep Stick as fast as possible. If you look at my CS TOF so far, I'm at 75 and 9 with 3 kills. And so far, the enemy team, not very smart. They ganked me a few times, they did not have dust. Uh, Puck wasn't the best player, but Vengeful Spirit did a really good job at shutting him down, so kudos to him. And one other mistake that I have here is I don't have a TP scroll, being pretty selfish this game. Like, I could teleport and maybe get kills on Tidehunter, I could maybe teleport and help get kills on heroes like Juggernaut, who might survive here, actually. Not quite sure. Shadow Demon looks like he's completely out of mana, so I think that guy will survive. I'm going to find Pudge once again, I'm going to be aggressive to him. Once again, I have really good items, I'm hitting him for plus 50 and Pudge's armor pretty low early. So all of a sudden... I can just lane absolutely fine. This is mainly as a result of having three kills so far and free farm. And the only person that's even close to my last hits, I guess, is probably Lycan because he has a hand of Midas. So let's check the GPMs. Uh, my GPM at this point is 426, which is ridiculously stupidly high for 14 minutes in the game. You should only be around 30, like 300 or so, but I've gotten three kills and that tower last hit, that tier 2 tower that I last hit. So that's why my GPM is so high. That's the point, picking up a illusion. All the towers are gone top, so what I decided to do was leave the lane. Uh, the chances of me going and raxing is very unlikely. At this point, it's pretty dangerous as well, so I decided to go mid to try to take out that tower instead. It looks like Twisco's actually here with his ulti, so... Good stuff, easy kills. I actually get that last hit as well, luckily. I didn't even use Searing Arrows on that one, but was able to score that kill. I'm at 2k gold, so I'm 700 away from getting a Mystic Staff, and if an enemy hero rolls up, might as well throw the damage on him. And it looks like Lycan was going on me, but uses his ulti, I went invisible immediately. Now he's going to change targets, so we will have a team fight here. Puck's going to come through, Lycan will get silenced, and I just finally started to fight. So I wasn't quite sure, I don't remember if I was flustered or what, but looks like Puck was in the middle as well. I wasn't quite ready... You have to be a little careful skeleton walk. It's got a 20 second cooldown. That's the problem. So you can't just invis and attack and invis and attack. It's not like a hero like Bounty Hunter. So you have to be very deliberate with your movements, pretty much. It looks like there's going to be a Pudge, and I was going to attack this one. Fine. I go invisible here because I was expecting to rot, and then uh, he ends up getting killed anyway. So Chachi gets the last hit, and I'm now up to 2700 gold. And this is the part where he said, Hey guys, I have sheep. So it's going to be a 16 minute sheep treads with a ring of Aquila. My gold per minute right now is probably a little, yeah, 466, so pretty decent. And there it is, so now my mana regen is at 7.6 a second. I'm never going to have to rely on mana ever again, uh, because it will be constantly full, most likely, unless I attack with Searing Arrows forever. And I will find this puck, and I think I go for the kill here. I did do the sheep, I did not have... I don't know why I didn't use Searing Arrows, I probably should have. My HP is a little low as well, and I was worried about dying there. If Puck would have maybe had his ulti or something, it could have been really bad, but... I think at this point I run all the way back to base, or I go in the jungle, I can't remember. I think it was at this point where I tested out Death Pack to see if it actually did heal me up. And I haven't played Clinks in so long. This is I, I played him once so far in the Dota 2 beta, but I think that was about it. So Going into the jungle, looks like I find a Centaur. We'll see how much that heals me up. I'm at 194, so give me about 6, 800, 700, 700 HP. Very, very good. And this does scale, so health gain goes up, damage gain goes up, and I'm hitting for 165. So. The nice thing about the sheep stick, once again, I get a little bit of damage out of it. I, my mana is never really going to be a problem for the rest of the game, and I have that nice disable. So I just spend a little bit of time farming here, because obviously I do want to get a heal up. Um, it's kind of a little dangerous for me to gank right now. I did also reveal that I had the sheep, which is a little bit of a mistake. If this was a more serious game, I think that would give the enemy team more staples about, oh god, we need to like do something now, because he's already got a freaking sheep stick at 16 minutes, but... 
like, uh, yeah, my ulti ended there and my HP shift was huge. I've got six seconds left on the death pack and I'm pretty sure I just pick up a mud golem or something like that. Or oh, I'm going to find a centaur actually, so. See how much this boosts up my damage, 94. Nope, I don't grab it, so. Let's see, oh, yes I do. Wait, nope, no I don't. Yes, 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 yes! <laughs> It's hard to it's hard to remember that guys when you, when you're watching in a replay the second time around like after after I watch a gameplay you're thinking about different things while it's happening so as an observer it's so much easier to say like oh god it's so obvious use the death pack use the death pack but for all I know I was like looking down here at the team fights going on and yeah that's what I was doing so I bought some TP scrolls looks like I might yeah I'm gonna be initiating into this team fight and. He did actually do a hook for me, but he ended up missing, so... And if there's an ulti, I go invisible, so that ends up being... Actually, that was the full thing anyways, and here's the Vanish now on the Shadow Demon. And getting ready to initiate, I have to be very, very careful. Looks like the ulti ran out, and there is Pudge now. And finally getting ready. Here comes the Strafe. Alright, finally doing the Strafe. Soul catches up on the Pudge, so he takes good damage, and I sheeped him. Tide ulti does hit me. And continue to chase here. Once again, my damage isn't that significant quite yet, so... Looks like a nice ulti. Looks like he used my death pack on an allied creep to boost up my damage a little bit. And a couple auto attacks to clean that guy up. And not going to give up at this point. Two levels of skeleton walk will give me good movement speed, so I'll pursue this one. Chachi will have more battle hunger, so easy stuff. And there's the banished one's going to use searing arrows. And that's going to be an easy kill. So, and I end up picking that one up, so... Despite just having a sheep stick, my damage is still pretty significant. Because I have Searing Arrows, 50 damage a piece thrown off. I have to be a little careful about where I teamfight and things like that, but it's not always easy. And Tony talking shit, because he's so pro. So pro! So pro. Alright. Uh, oh yeah, Satyrs have as much as Dark Trolls, so... Give me so much HP, like 700 HP out of that one. And now hitting for 170 plus the 50 damage as well. So if we look at my stat gain, it's not that significant for level 13. I actually don't know. Um, I, I feel like Clinks's after I played this game, I felt like Clinks's attack speed is really not that amazing. It's really all about strafe. I, I assume that he has just crappy stats. Um, and I, I, it's hard for me to tell whether or not that's the case. Let's check another hero. This is a level 11 like, and he's got 49 strength. So. Um, I don't know, I guess it's probably pretty normal. It's it's just hard to, hard to say. Death Pact obviously provides a lot of survivability, and Syrian Arrows makes up for the fact that your agility isn't that high. But at this point, I was looking to take the bot tower, because that would be an option, and I don't even care about Tidehunter. He can cast on me if he wants to. I can lower his HP by a whole crap load. Looks like he does have a salve, though, and I was going to go invisible. I don't know if our ward spotted this out or not, but I figured they would be ganking me, so I did back up. But I'm still looking for a kill. I still have the sheep stick. Anybody that I find in the jungle is definitely killable. And we'll see if I take a Dark Troll Warlord. Do it. Yes. Alright, so lots of bonus damage. I do know Pudge is right here. I think at this point I backed up just a little bit waiting for the Invisible, so I was going to scout these guys out. And I do see a Pudge as well as a Lycan, so not quite the right time to go. You always have to be a little bit patient, and now I'm following. I was hoping he would wait for a ward or something, and or go for Roshan, actually, at this point. I was like, oh my god, is he going to try Roshan Because I could pick him off easy. But instead he's going for the Ancients. It's a little dangerous, so at this point I'm just waiting until he gets into it, and then I'm a Sheep and Strafe. In any second now. There it goes. There's a strafe. There's the sheep. I misclicked a little bit. Attacked the wolf once, but decent damage being done. And there you go. Sheep absolutely paying off. So I sheep him before he gets to ult. He has no chance of running at that point because he was disabled. And I guess hypothetically speaking, oh, that's right. I got sheep hooked there. And once again, no dust. I would have died. I would have died there, guaranteed. I could have could have gotten ulti by Omni Slash or something, or by uh, Juggernaut or something. But Twisted was like, he's trapped. He's trapped. <laughs> There's the ulti from Puck now, we get to team fight this one. And I barely dodged that tether. That was really close. Escaping. Tony is gonna die, Chachi will do his best. But I think yeah, I still remember the Venge dies now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I didn't see what happened last time when I watched. That's new. He hooked the tide, tide would have killed him. Yeah, Tide Tide would have killed him for sure. I didn't realize that. I, I saw the I saw the Venge. He said something to all chat like "Holy shit, I survived" or something, but I didn't realize that was how. So, pretty funny. It looks like a teleport to the top lane. I think there was a big push there or something. I can't quite remember. Anyways, at this point, in terms of an item build, I could have gone a couple different ways. My gold per minute is still really really high, 474. It's way higher than it should be at this point. I am seven zero and two. Just because of partially sheep and just good decisions, being careful, you I mean I almost died a couple times in those team fights. You just have to be so careful about your decision making in team fights. 
going back in the jungle to get some HP as well as uh, free money. You do get money for these, by the way. So as you can see, 100 gold every time, or at least on whichever ranking they are. So up to 1,800. So I think I know. I know this game. I, I opted to go for a butterfly. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna try to kill Pudgy. It does have a haste. So I, I wanted to wait. I knew I saw his haste. I knew if I sheeped him, he would still be max movement speed. So I just have to wait and be patient. It's so important to be patient. And he rotted a crap load of his HP down. So at this point, we knew that he was probably going to teleport out. And here comes my initiation. I actually misclicked a little bit. Almost made it, but I did get the sheep off. And there's the kill. I don't know if he still had haste on when he tried to TP or not, but that was an easy pickup. Sheep stick pain off. And I'm up to a monster kill. Able to gank effectively, so... I did opt for a butterfly this game. Now, it's... If, I, if this game is a lot closer, a butterfly is probably not what I would have gone for, but it's still not a bad decision by any means. The reason that I opted for butterfly is, first of all, I'm very, very har far ahead in farm, and that means when I'm this far ahead is that I want to be greedy with my item choices, right? That's always what you want to do. If you're far ahead, it's generally better to be a little bit more greedy, because that will end up giving you more performance. So I pick up the Eagle Song, 25 agility, that's 25 damage, 25% attack speed. Not the best item solo, but... Butterfly is so amazing that it ends up being worth it. So the reason I went for Butterfly, not only just to increase my attack speed a lot, and also give me some healthy damage boost, but also because um, it gives me evasion. It gives you 35% evasion, it was recently buffed. It also would give me an extra 30 damage, so... Uh, after I complete the recipe, of course, so based on the Eagle Song. So 30 damage, 30 attack speed, 35% evasion, and... 30 agility, so it really gives you 60% attack speed increase, which is huge, so it's going to increase my damage a lot, Syrian arrows already make up a brunt of my damage, but as you can see, my attack speed isn't ridiculous. Strafe obviously does increase it a lot, but at this point I'm still being pretty aggressive, I don't really have to worry about these guys a whole lot, I do go invisible finally, as the puck comes up, it looks like we're about to teamfight here, Twisco coming through his ulti just ends, and then we just end up fearing, uh, yeah, Twisco ended up silencing him, so that was an easy kill, turned and fought that one. There's the Pudge, there's the Sheep, and the Swap as well, and that's an easy kill on the Pudge now. So with Eagle Song doing decent damage, going for the Butterfly, wanted that evasion, because we're up against a Juggernaut, we're up against a Lycan, so being able to dodge their attacks is so important to keeping my HP up. Looks like Lycan is going to jump in. Let's see, he goes for Tide, Ravage barely catches me there, but at this point I think I'm, yeah, I'm just going to go straight on the Lycan throw, I don't know if I get the kill. Yeah, I do get the a long range arrow and immediately I'm going straight for the tower because we should be able to rax at this point once we kill this many heroes and once again Klinks does good damage. It was going to be Jug, he almost ulted me there but uh, he ends up ulting Chachi instead. And I go to the high ground and now I'm going to strafe and the sheep and some auto attacking should do the deal. He's actually quite tanky. Ooh, he ends up surviving. Rattle with that one. Puck's going to phase out though and try to kill her. So I use my ulti. Puck phase again, dang dude, so many puck phases. See right there, dodged it. Well, that one was a little different, but... So he's able to get the kill him up to 187, hitting... Oh, pretty hard. Pretty hard there. But we just have to Rax at this point. So I went for the, r the range just because it was so low. I don't. I couldn't believe that guy got hooked. That we did have vision of him right there. Kind of blew my mind. So I want to take the melee barracks and then we go invisible and leave. No reason to really stay, unless maybe to save... Silly, silly twist go. So I wanted to attack on the high ground. I chef, I was waiting sheep until he dismembered, so that worked out good. Going on the lichen now. Once again, really, really high attack speed. And committing. Gotta commit. Alright, and we're able to kill the Juggernaut as well. Almost died. I, I didn't know if I was going to survive there. The Gush made a big difference by lowering my armor down, but with the Eagle Song up, I have big agility already, so... I think I had enough for... Yeah, I did have enough for Butterfly right now, but... So things going pretty good. I think I'm up to... 11, 0, and 6 with 155 CS. And there's the butterfly, the double town of Porter Skull. As you guys can see, I'm fast as hell. 518, that's almost max movement speed. Max movement speed is 522. So, with that uh, slow alone. So now, my item's pretty basic. 26 minute game, but butterfly, side of the vice. Pretty good stuff. Gold per minute Radiant's is probably still high. Yeah, 543, so... 26 minutes for these are great. And once again, guys, the enemies I'm fighting are not very good, so this is part of the reason that I'm doing well, but it's, it's tough to get games like these where you play a hero like Clinks who doesn't have a lot of capacity in terms of high-skilled players, and then you do... It's, so it's basically hard to get really, really good Clinks games in. Why did, why did Tony say that? I don't know. Looks like Lycan is now chasing a little bit. 
He does have treads, vlads, but they hand him Midas, but he's pretty behind in farm. I think at this point I said screw it, I'm just gonna push, or no, no, I think I, I think I came for it. See, so he was still running through the jungle, and Lycan is now slow, so... I think he seems to, yeah, he like swaps on me for a second there, that was a little weird. And there's the speed burst, there's the sheep, looks like the wolves might get them done. Yeah, the wolves actually got the kill though. Well, my attack speed good, I'm gonna take an ulti, and there's the dismember as well. Which was a little bit late, I'm running away, but the Tide Ravage is going to seal my death. Sad day. I was actually hoping that uh, Chachi would do a battle hunt, or Berserker's Call as soon as the Pudge ulti went down. That would have been better because I did get dismembered for a little bit and I was in rot damage for way too long. Also, I didn't have a death pact up. That was another mistake, so hypothetically speaking, maybe I should have ran into the jungle and just like death pacted one of these guys. About an extra 500 HP there that could have been a lot different. So I'm going to speed up at this point because there's no point hanging out at least. Just follow this Radiant's juggernaut. Just so I'm dead attack. a little bit less longer. When you get a big kill streak like that, it ends up taking a long time before you respawn. So. Field them creeps. Alright, and we can slow this back down again. Alright, back up to a thousand gold. So I'm picking up a blades of attack. The next item I'm gonna go for is a uh, a Daedalus. Crystal Crystallis first. Crystallis is a very good item for clinks just because yeah, we found Pudge here. I remember this now. I'm trying to set up the gank once again. I'm waiting for Tony to come. I'm like, Tony, come. What are you doing? Tony, come on. Tony, where are you? And he's like, okay, I'm coming now. But, you know, Pudge was right here. We could have jumped on him a lot easier. And he ends up hooking at Mud Golem, which is weird. There's a silence. And he ends up cycloning. I was like, why the hell did you do that? I was really mad about that one. And he ended up committing suicide. <laughs> He's like, I wanted to steal a kill, ha ha ha, and I'm like, you realize if you want to steal a kill, you just have to use death crip swarm, like right before he dies. I, I don't know what that was supposed to do, and he burned his ulti for that one, it was an absolute waste, so. Whatever, use my sheep, not a huge loss for me. Anyways, going for the Daedalus, this allows you to increase your damage by quite a bit. Um, at this point I can just kind of wail on Roshan, take some damage up here. But, definitely wanted the Aegis, because I didn't want to die again. I don't really like dying for some reason. I don't know why, but especially when I have this nice of items and I'm hitting for this hard even without using Death Pack, it's, uh, the game is going well, pretty much. So I drop the TP scroll, I grab it before Tony can steal it from me. And gonna continue the farm. Ancients now, you can't, I don't believe you can use, uh, Searing Arrows on these ones. Maybe you can on the blue ones, I don't remember, but... Looks like there's some team fight happening. Looks like he ends up ulting the enemy team, which I'll run into it. There's a cyclone really late. I'm just gonna auto attack right through that. I can change, yeah, changing targets on the... The old... Attack the, the ward, there we go, I got it. So I got a few kills. At this point I can buy the, um, the Crystallis. Used to be called Lesser Crit a long time ago, but I think Crystallis is the best. Uh, a little bit more of an appropriate name, at least. So that's going to give me crit possibilities. 20% chance for 175. And that tower was easily lasted. Well, Chachi takes that one out. And this is the time when you want to swing into the jungle in between uh, pushing, just to be able to snag up the the uh, HP and damage bonus, of course. Now getting 8% damage gain and 80% health, so it's like 600, I think, of that mud golem. Good stuff. Two shotting creeps. Don't remember if I... Okay, good, I did bring the courier. So plus 35 damage now, I get a critical chance. Which means I can do plenty more physical damage to any of these guys. SD's gonna go through. I did strafe this. There's a sheep. Oh, it looks like I have two crits in a row. That's pretty lucky. <laughs> two crits in a row when you only have 10% chances. Or 20% chance. 
<laughs> Tony was really happy about that one. <laughs> it seemed to remember. So now I'm at 2100 gold and still gonna be working on that. I don't know whose Mystic Staff that is. Don't quite remember. With Puck Silence like that, I go up to the high ground. No point to be not aggressive. And it's gonna be two hits. Able okay, to take him off strafe now. The amount of damage that Clinks does to towers is pretty ridiculous. That's right, it was Chachi's Shivas that he was making. And now I two shot all the moon walls in existence because I can, and they're worth 100 gold apiece, so why not? Gold per minute right now, sitting at 614. Lots of kills, lots of pushing, lots of high action. Not spending a, a lot of downtime, basically. The important part. Oh, and then I was like, oh, this tower has one shot left on it. See, this is this was a little issue. I had the Aegis here, but I ended up using my invisibility. I probably should have death packed it immediately. That was a mistake. But I do get Juggernaut before I die. If he ultis me, that was a complete waste. And they silence me perfectly, and then I just get dismembered and rot. And then I go invisible and the hook misses. And then the Anchor Smash almost kills me. And now I'm like, please God, don't Anchor Smash me again. He could have killed me right there. Could have killed me. Instead he finds Chachi. And I did a death pack to heal up a little bit. Not too worried at that point. I really should have done a death pack on one of those creeps as they rolled up. That would have kept me a lot more survivable. Another mistake, but that's okay. I don't play Clinks that often. Ever, really. Alright, and this should be me buying the MKB, or the Daedalus. So there it is. I'm going to run towards the creeps. Going to find an uh, illusion. illusion. At this point, we have a two racks advantage. It's a little weird not to have the mid racks down and only the, the top and the bottom. That's very peculiar, but it's okay. Alright, so Daedalus, 81 damage, 25% for 250. Now I'm critting for moderately high. 600 on those guys. I think I hit about 800 on these one, if I remember correctly. Radiant yeah, about 800, 750. Depending on their armor levels, that's why things shift so much. I'll find a mud golem here. Alright, so 2,291 HP with a mud golem. And I don't remember what I get after this. It doesn't really matter at this point. <laughs> at this point, you're so farmed. Yeah, I couldn't for like 900 on that guy. You don't really have to spend a lot of time in the jungle. I mean, really, we could push again. It wouldn't really be a big deal. Looks like Shadow Demon's gonna find the old Lycan. HP is so low. Good. Lucky. Oh no, that's one of his wolves. And looks like I'm still jungling. Still jungling. Nice, nice ulti from Juggernaut. Oh, he really almost got like three kills there. Tony dies like a noob as, po as he pops his ulti. Alright, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to pick up a Yasha, so I picks up I pick up the Yasha for the movement speed bonus, so I should be at max now. Yeah, I am. Make me faster when I'm not. Uh, invisible also increases my attack speed by about 31%, or by 31%, and a little bit of damage on top of that is always going to be nice. I think I decided to murder people here. Wasn't quite sure who I wanted though. And after he did the hook, I just went for it. Give me them crits. Yep. So when he spins, you don't you you can cast the Syrian arrows. But you do get to cast regular, and I, I didn't get any crits on Pudge there, I now notice, but... And there is a wolf, and since I have a butterfly, and a Yasha, and a Daedalus, I just go for it. So that was a two-shot plus a Shivas. Break that tether, no problem. Let's be 396, and I'm gonna find a Wildkin, so... Another quality heal. And at this point... I pretty much demonstrated that I can solo their team pretty well. I could get Chain Disabled, it's not like I'm invincible here, so sometimes a Black King Bar would be a good choice at this position instead of a Yasha, but it was pretty healthy. Straight giving me some decent damage output. And even if these guys weren't here, I could obviously Rex by myself pretty easily, just by having huge damage. I don't have minus armor, which is usually more typical when you end up uh, Raxing quite quickly, but it's okay. Yeah, 
Gritty and Pudge for about 800. That's pretty good. At this point, I was going to buy a Sanjin Yasha. I accidentally bought an Oblivion Staff. I just bought a Sanjin Yasha for no particular reason. I accidentally attacked the, the fountain for the rest of the game. I was trying to attack heroes. I clicked on the ground, but that was a mistake. But that is okay. Alright, so that's how you play Clinks, guys. Um, I was probably the, one of the best Clinks games I've ever played, but I've only played Clinks like four times in my life, and I've been playing Dota for like three or four years, so. It's understandable. There it is. 22, 1, and 10. 226 last hits in a 37 minute game, and my gold per minute was 694 with 856 XP per minute. The reason that number is so high is because I was in a lot of team fights. Uh, maybe not a ton, but a good amount of team fights. I was pushing a lot and got good tower last hits and things like that. So, Alright, thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys want to see more stuff like this in the future. Um, at the very least, we'll have quiet recordings for a week. Let me check with my ears. So, so whisper quiet right now. Excellent. Um, once again, Sorry that we didn't have this from player perspective, but unfortunately that was bugged out and a uh, sad day, but that's how things go sometimes, so um, I wish I would have recorded this one, but I didn't, so at least you guys got to see Clink's gameplay. I prob This will allow me to not have to play one in the future, so I hope you guys enjoy. And also, one last thing, guys, go check out my new forum page. It's at uh, my website, purgegamers.com slash forums, and you can go find that to... Uh, communicate with people, make friends in the, uh, that also watch my videos, or find people to play with. Uh, I, I'd like to think that a lot of the people that watch are very intelligent, nice people, so if you're looking for people that aren't ragers, I think that's a good place to find them. So, Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.